This is Philly Drone Tech with Tom Brunt. Sponsorship provided by AWeber.com, GetFlywheel.com, and Wistia.com. Hello there, folks. Welcome to another episode of Philly Drone Tech here on the phillytech.org netcast network. I'm Tom Brunt. Before I get started, I'll do a little bit of uh, housekeeping chores like I usually do. Um, mainly, if you are listening to me on an audio-only podcast network, which I understand I'm available on, uh, it really would be best for you to look at me in the, the video uh, realm. Uh, this is a, more of a visual medium that I use this podcast for. I, I talk about a lot of websites and, and sometimes do demos and uh, the such like that. So uh, if you can, go to phillytech.org and look for Philly Drone Tech, and then you can uh, look at me and all uh, video brilliance. So now let's uh, let's start the show. Um, I got a lot to talk about in this episode. Uh, first, as I usually do, we talk about the FAA. Well, um, what I have to report this episode is uh, that uh, there is a real estate uh, photographer in Arizona, name of Douglas Trudeau, who is now the first and only legally licensed real estate photographer for drone photography. Uh, he has received a Section 333 exemption from the FAA and provided he follows uh, a couple of rather strict rules, uh, he is good to go. And as such, with all the real estate drone photography you've seen uh, up to this point is technically against the law. Uh, however, Douglas will be the first uh, person that is uh, been legally allowed by the FAA to to shoot. Uh, he is using a Phantom 2 quadcopter, similar to uh, Humpty right here. And let's uh, let's go over some of these rules here. Um, first thing he has to do is he has uh, obtain a personal pilot's license within 120 days. Uh, personal pilot's license, and that includes a full um, a cleared medical certificate. Uh, he has to mark the aircraft. FAA's words as experimental in as large of lettering as possible. Um, how large do they expect it to be on a craft that's this size? Uh, provide for an additional spotter on the ground while flying. Limit each flight to three to seven minutes. Limit the height to no more than 300 feet. And uh, the final thing he has to do is place warning signs reading attention, aerial photography in progress, remain back 150 feet within a 150 foot perimeter of the property. Now, the interesting thing about this is, is that this is what uh, Douglas has to do in order to uh, legally um, sell services to operate his drone for real estate photography. Meanwhile, uh, right next door to the property he's shooting could be a drone uh, hobbyist with the same quadcopter. And basically, he is allowed to do almost anything he wants without any of the restrictions and have no training whatsoever, let alone a pilot's license. Um, the only thing that's different about this is that uh, Douglas is doing it for profit. Uh, it's, I mean, it's, it's as if the FAA is just purposely trying to stifle business use as much as possible. And it's, it's just such a wrong approach. Um, until they work out rules, this is how they're going about. You can, uh, if you wanna do this yourself or legally for, for profit, you can ask for an exemption from the FAA. Wait maybe about six months or so for them to hopefully grant it to you. And then uh, start going after your uh, full pilot's license. So this is a this is a real crazy way to go about this, and let's hope it's it's pretty short lived. Um, so there's my first story. Uh, next story that has to do with the FAA. Um, they recently have sent um, uh, booklets to uh, law a 12 page booklet to uh, law enforcement uh, officers around the country. Uh, they're looking for their help. Uh, to be able to find and prosecute uh, illegal drone flyers, whether it's a hobbyist flying recklessly or somebody that's illegally using it for profit. 
some analysts have said that uh, this approach may not work. The FAA may find that uh, law enforcement really isn't going to be that interested in, in helping them. They've got uh, a lot of other things on their plate, a little more important than what they'll see is doing the FAA's job. Um, unless you were doing something that is disturbing uh, the public or doing something obviously wrong, like flying uh, over a stadium um, or over crowds of people, that's an obvious danger uh, and you could be cited by the police for that. They may find that uh, the police really just aren't going to be that interested. Um, this is this is part of what I uh, said previously. I call it the whack-a-mole approach. Uh, let's just try to get everybody that's doing it. There's so many people doing it. They're they're not going to have a chance at doing that. Uh, the uh, if you remember back in the early 2000s, the recording industry tried a similar approach with uh, people downloading music illegally. It just just sue them all. And that didn't stop people from doing it, and it didn't work for the recording industry, and I don't see it working for the FAA. And what it's going to be amount to is just more of a waste of time when they should be trying to put together reasonable regulations. So we'll see how, we'll see if this has any bite uh, to law enforcement agencies, and I'll report that in uh, a upcoming episodes. So uh, let's take a little quick of a bit of a sponsor break. And when I come back, um, something that's close to my heart uh, in sports broadcasting. Uh, the first uh, FAA approved use of a drone for a live sports broadcast. So I'll talk about that when I come back. Today's show is sponsored by Wistia. Wistia is a video hosting and analytics platform that helps businesses get the most out of online video. We use Wistia here at phillytech.org. Flywheel, a managed WordPress hosting platform built specifically for designers and creative agencies and helps thousands of designers across the world launch projects every day. Aweber is local to the Philly region, helping entrepreneurs, agencies, and small businesses connect with their customers through email marketing. Go to aweber.com slash phillytech to find out more. And by Soho Mail, professional, low-cost email with business class features and security. Okay, welcome back. Well, the next story I have for you comes kind of close to my heart because uh, my main career is in uh, sports broadcasting. I'm a, I'm a broadcast uh, engineer. And, uh, well, just uh, recently the uh, X Games uh, concluded in Aspen, Colorado televised exclusively, as always, from ESPN. So did you uh, watch any of the coverage? Do you know what I'm about to talk about? Well, uh, ESPN debuted what they called Drone Vision. Uh, yes, that's right. They used a drone uh, to capture some of the action uh, from the X Games. Um, they did this under the approval uh, of the FAA. Um, how were they able to do this? Well, uh, a couple months ago, the FAA approved uh, seven companies, uh, aerial photography companies, to the uh, Section 333 exemption to uh, be able to operate for uh, film and uh, video uh, television um, services, uh, operate uh, drones. So ESPN, uh, ESPN partnered with one of those companies. Um, they, they had to adhere to some strict guidelines. They, uh, they weren't allowed to use it over crowds, uh, but that worked out well with some of the ski slopes and the high jumps that they, they used. Um, they, uh, also, how they did it is they had uh, actually two operators. One operated the drone itself and flew it, and then a second operator handled the controls for the camera. Uh, this was not a consumer phantom by any means. This was a, uh, an eight-prop uh, copter uh, with a uh, Myobi stabilizer gimbal and a much higher quality camera, plus a live HD link to bring the feed back to the production truck. Um, now, this was a big experiment for ESPN. Uh, nobody really knew how this was going to turn out, um, but from what I understand, a lot of footage made air. Uh, there were no crashes, no, no mishaps, and uh, it was very successful, uh, which this is very good uh, that this, this happened. Uh, this is only just the beginning, folks, as the FAA sets the guidelines and, or allows companies on a 
you know, on a piece by piece basis to do this kind of work, you're going to start seeing it in, in live events uh, more often now. So this was, uh, this was uh, very good, very good news. Uh, that brings me to my next story about uh, broadcasting, uh, which is also uh, very good news. Um, as it turns out, CNN uh, is partnering with the FAA uh, to do research on how drones can be integrated into live journalism. Uh, let's see what it says here is that their cooperation agreement will integrate efforts from CNN's research partnership with the Georgia Tech Research Institute uh, and the FAA and this has already begun so CNN is basically a test bed for the FAA to see how uh, drones can be used uh, safely and effectively uh, for uh, news gathering uh, this is this is very good, and now I've I've come down on the FAA hard for their lack of um, lack of coming up with sensible regulations. But I I'm really happy that they did this. They are actually partnering with a broadcaster, somebody. They are actually getting input from somebody that has a lot of experience and will bring a lot of experience to the table as far as how exactly they intend to use uh, drones uh, for their broadcast. So the fact that the FAA is partnering with a, a major broadcaster uh, says that they, they, they are starting to open up and, and listen and be a little more open about coming up with regulations that hopefully will be um, applicable to the technology. Uh, maybe the days of uh, having a full pilot's license may be short-lived uh, after doing this research with uh, CNN. Well, the next story I have uh, for you, you most likely probably already heard about. Uh, it happened just a few days before I recorded this podcast. You probably heard about the drone that was found crashed on the White House lawn. Well, as soon as I heard that it was 3 o'clock in the morning and it was found, uh, found next to a tree, uh, I immediately disregarded any sense of foul play or terrorism and went, oops, it's a hobbyist. Well, about a day later, they, uh, they, they found out, yes, that's exactly what it was. It was a hobbyist. And actually, to the guy's credit, the guy immediately like, called the Secret Service and fessed up and said, yeah, that's mine. So I, I don't know what he was thinking. Um, you can see by the pictures here, it was a, a DJI Phantom 1. Um, I don't know where he was. He obviously must have been somewhere near the White House, at least, somewhere downtown in D.C., but, uh, and a, a first-time pilot. Uh, so if you know you're you're just starting off flying these things probably doing it at night and doing it uh well near the center of uh, the u.s government probably not the smartest idea so uh i mean hopefully the secret service will give it back to him and he'll have a nice story to tell um well what will this mean though um it's it could be good or it could be bad for uh drone regulations um it it, it it could be the thing that kind of pushes the FAA to, all right, we've got to get some sensible regulation done now and let's get it done. Or it could uh, cause like the panic, uh, let's, let's just ban all drones. Uh, hopefully not. Um, Obama wasn't at the White House at the time when the drone crashed. I believe he was in, he was in India. But CNN did uh, talk to him about it. And uh, here's uh, some of Obama's thoughts on it. He said he's assigned several federal agencies to work with stakeholders to create a framework to ensure drones are safe and aren't violating people's privacy. Now, this is, uh, this, this, here's a quote that I, I liked. I'm glad he said this. He said, uh, he likened the drone industry to cyberspace, which has brought new technologies U.S. laws are still trying to catch up to. He then goes on to say, these technologies that we're developing have the capacity to empower individuals in ways that we couldn't even imagine 10 to 15 years ago, Obama said, pledging the work to create a framework that ensures that we get the good and minimize the bad. I hope to take that as he understands that there are a lot of commercial applications that are viable and useful with this drone tech and that uh, we should develop it properly. A time will tell. Um, I guess uh, something else I should tell you that just recently also happened, this was like the next day after this uh, happened, uh, since it was a DJI Phantom, uh, DJI, the makers of the Phantom, have uh, put out a firmware uh, update that basically will ground 
their uh, drones if they are within a 15-mile radius of Washington, D.C. Now, supposedly, they already do this for major airports. Uh, it's built into the, the software. Since it is a GPS-enabled device, it knows where it is. So uh, if you're too close to an airport, it will either fly very low or not take off at all. Uh, now, in the case of Washington, D.C., if you live in Washington, D.C. and own the G DJI Phantom, um, well, you have an expensive paperweight now. But um, time will tell if others are going to do that and if that's how we're going to start regulating these things somewhat is that the, they're at least from uh, the consumer level um, so that this doesn't happen again. This was just a consumer mistake, but uh, it could have had major implications, of course. So we'll see what happens and and obviously just kind of stay tuned and and i'll keep updating you as i find out more of of how the faa responds to this next let's uh let's have some fun um there's this uh, great website called travelbydrone.com and if you look at it uh, basically it's uh, it features uh, pins on the map uh, from all over the world and with those pins users submit their uh, drone recorded videos of a particular location uh, if you have a video that's on either YouTube or Vimeo it basically links to those those videos from your account and it, it forms like I said uh, pins on a map so let's uh, you can let's take a look here here's Pennsylvania and we'll uh, kind of zoom in a little bit here and uh, let's go into where I'm from uh, in uh, Doylestown here and uh, look, there's a couple in there. Let me click on this. Hey, how about that? That's my video. Uh, yes, I put a couple videos up there on the, on the site, uh, ones that I've done. Uh, I put uh, Doylestown, Pennsylvania and uh, Ocean City, New Jersey. So uh, let's uh, go back out a little bit here and let's go, uh, go down to Philadelphia here. And you can see uh, how many there are here in Philadelphia. So let's click on this and uh, let's go. Let's look at this one over here. And uh, oh yes, that's uh, that's definitely uh, that's Philadelphia uh, there for you. Um, so this is like this is like a, a fantastic site uh, if you really want to look at the drone videos that are all all user all submitted by users, and uh, and you can uh, submit your own. So it's 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 a lot of fun. I I really like this. Uh, this is a cool little website. Well, that's about all I have for you for this uh, episode of uh, Philly Drone Tech. And as always, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, you, can, uh, you can feel free to follow me at, uh, on Twitter at DroneGuyTom. Or you can also send me an email at DroneGuy at TebWeb.com. Um, I'm pleased to say I'm starting to get some, uh, some emails now. In fact, I'd like to read, uh, read some to you. Uh, first one here is from, uh, from Tito. And he told me that he enjoyed the uh, enjoyed my review on the uh, the SEMA X5C copter that I did uh, a couple shows ago, but he also wanted to tell me about this uh, this other one called a JJRC H8C quadcopter, uh, which is comparable in price and features to the SEMA. Uh, it might be worth taking a look at. It's got the same uh, same type two megapixel camera. Uh, and basically, it's just another form of the SEMA X5C, from what I can tell. But uh, I did look at it and uh, looked at some of the reviews on it, and some people, some people like it and say they call it the uh, X5C. Uh, um, is it the X5C killer? Uh, I'm not so sure. It is. Uh, it does have some. I think each unit has like pros and cons to it. The one thing about the uh, the uh, HRC, the 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 H8C uh, is that it has a um, uh, 7.4 battery uh, volt battery as opposed to 3.7 so it's got a little more oomph to it I guess you, should, you could say uh, but I think the camera quality is about as comparable to the SEMA and they are about the same price so uh, so that's 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 good there but uh, and in a follow-up email he told me something that really I found kind of interesting uh, another one from from JJRC is the H12C and this this one it looks like it retails for about eighty dollars and it operates in headless mode uh what headless mode is here let me uh practice here with i'll show you here's my sema um traditional copter here's the head here's the front of it so as you if you turn it sideways as it's flying away from you now if you move the joystick forward it's now going to move this way toward what it sees as the front 
this can get very very confusing uh, if you're uh, e even an intermediate flyer I tend to avoid uh, flying that way uh, with these just to avoid uh, orientation issues uh, what headless means uh, it's similar to what the phantom can do headless means that regardless of which way this is pointing let's say it's pointing this way when you move forward on the stick it will move forward in relation to you forward back left, right, uh, regardless of where the front of the craft is. Uh, these are much easier to fly uh, that way. And uh, it also says it has a return to home feature, which kind of tells me that it, it has a GPS. Now for $80, that's pretty impressive. So uh, uh, thanks Tito for uh, pointing that out to me. And I think I, uh, I am probably going to take a look at it. And if I do get one, I'll, I'll be sure to do a review on it. Um, lastly, he uh, made a comment that he says that he thinks the FAA allows people to fly drones under 55 pounds and under 400 feet uh, away from people in buildings and during the day. And uh, yes, that is true. Uh, that is, that's pretty much what they recommend for hobbyists. Uh, but overall, the, the points that I, I do in, in my podcast is that uh, if you're doing it commercially, then you're just not permitted to fly, period. Um, you know, hobbyists are allowed to permitted, are, are permit, permitted under those guidelines. But again, if you, uh, if you wish to um, do anything for profit, uh, you're just, you're grounded pretty much to, uh, to, to keep legal. Um, so, and that's, that's all my, my push that I always talk about with the FAA. So, uh, hey Tito, thanks for, uh, thanks. I'm glad you liked the show. And uh, let me go to uh, one more here. There's a guy by the name of Jason. Uh, Jason, uh, he also liked the review I did on the SEMA X5C, but wanted to know where, where to get it from, um, from a U.S. distributor. He's having a lot of trouble finding, uh, finding U.S. distributors. Now, when I first bought, I bought two of the SEMAs a couple months ago, back in the fall, and I bought them both on Amazon. And in both cases, I found a U.S. Uh, supplier. Uh, and I got them delivered in just a matter of days. Uh, unfortunately, I've been looking on Amazon lately and I can no longer find any uh, US uh, suppliers. They all ship directly from China, which can take about three to four weeks. Um, with the SEMA, I found much uh, better success going to eBay and uh, going to an eBay store. Uh, there were numerous um, US-based suppliers that had stock of the SEMAs and uh, you can get those in just a matter of days. So uh, eBay may kind of turn into my new go-to place to look for uh, quadcopters and accessories if I, if I kind of want them quickly. I'm, I'm a little bit impatient. Um, I don't really want to wait a month uh, to get it. <laughs> so, uh, so there you go, um, there you go, Jason. And he also mentioned that they said it would be great if I could provide links to the topics that I talk about. And, you know, Jason, I agree with you. And I, I looked into it. And one thing that I have here at my disposal on uh, the phillytech.org netcast network is a blogging site called Medium, uh, medium.com. And with that, I am able to post uh, links. So for starting with this show and all of my shows, uh, you can go to medium.com slash at DroneGuyTom and there's the link on the screen there for you and you'll find uh, links to everything I talk about in the show and you'll find some occasional blog posts and ramblings about uh, you know stuff that I I think about in between doing these shows so uh, Jason thanks for that uh, thanks for that tip and uh, well it looks like I'm, I'm able to do it too so uh, again glad uh, glad people are starting to watch and uh, you know I, I hope to bring uh, more stuff to you uh, soon so thanks for watching this, uh, this episode, and I hope you uh, contact me on Twitter or through email and uh, or read the blog reports on uh, medium.com. And uh, I'll see you next time.